We are going to present the valuation of S, which can be looked upon as a holding company or as a conglomerate. If it is a holding company, the best thing to do is to calculate the net asset value, which consists in revaluing the various assets of S, which appear in the company or in the statutory balance sheet. On the opposite, if we calculate the sum of the parts, we will do the calculations based on consolidated amounts. Let's start with the net asset value. We are going to take the various assets of S, namely what we have in its balance sheet, and uh, in the balance sheet, we have the net book values. We have 3051, 4052, and so on. And of course, we can calculate the sum of the various net book values. We are going to enter in a second column the market values. For each asset, the market value can be looked upon as the market cap of the subsidiary times the shareholding which is held by S. So 70% of 1051, then 80% of 2052, and 20% of 3000 for F3. For the other asset, we have no listing, we have no information regarding their values. So we assume that the market value is equal to the net book value. And then we have the total assets based on market values, which corresponds to the enterprise value. If we want to uh, calculate the equity value, we have to enter the net debt, which is in the company balance sheet, namely 1000, and deduct the net debt from the total assets. So we have the equity value, which is 3,500 less 1,000, which is 2,500. We can check this calculation. We can calculate the capital gains or loss. So which is the difference for each line between the market cap and the net book value. And then we can see that the total capital gains uh, is worth 1,400. We have to keep in mind that the book value of equity, which happens to be in the balance sheet, is equal to 1,100. If the assets were revalued based on their market values, the total assets would be replaced by the total uh, market values. 2,100 would be replaced by 3,500, which means that the total assets would be increased by 1,400. And then on the other side of the balance sheet, the, the equity value will be revalued accordingly, which means that in that case, the equity value would be 1,400 plus 1,100. And we can see in that context that we get the same equity value. There is another way to check, which consists in calculating the sum of the parts. So if we calculate the sum of the parts, as I said in the introduction, we base our calculations on consolidated figures. But, of course, as we are preparing a valuation exercise, we have to take into account market values. I mean that for F1, we can calculate the enterprise value of F1, which means the economic value of its assets, which should be consolidated by S. So we are going to write down enterprise value of F1. So the enterprise value of F1 being 
its market cap plus the net debt. We can do the same for F2. And then we will say that it is the market cap 2000 plus the net debt 200. For uh, F3, it's different because F3, uh, which is only 20% held by S, is not fully consolidated. I mean that it is consolidated by the equity method. And in that context, uh, its assets wouldn't be consolidated by S. So for that reason, we are going to take the value of F3 shares and the value of F3 shares has already been calculated here, 600. We are also going to take into account the other assets, the economic value of which being equal to the market value. And then we have the enterprise value, which means the sum of the various economic values. If we now want to get the equity value, first of all, we have to deduct the consolidated net debt. We are going to suppose that there is no intragroup restatements. And for that reason, the consolidated net debt will be the sum of the net debt of S in its uh, statutory balance sheet plus the net debt of F1 plus the net debt of F2. We do not consolidate the net debt of F3 because F3 is not fully consolidated. That's it for the net debt, but we also have to deduct the minority interests based on their market values, because everything is taken into account based on market values. So minority interest, we have minority interest at F1 and at F2 levels for F1. We are going to say that we have one less 70%, namely 30%, times the market cap. And for uh, F2, we have one less 80% times 2000. And that's it. And at the end of the day, we can calculate the equity value, which is equal to the enterprise value, less the net debt, less the minority interest. And we can see that again, the equity value is equal to 2500.